What's up guys, how's everybody doing? So I have a theory that's been in my head for a good while now. And I'm going to go with what the popular opinion is just for the sake of my theory. Because I think it kind of makes sense. Now, first of all, people are thinking, and the majority of people are thinking, and I'm not disagreeing with people at all, that Breath of the Wild takes place right after Twilight Princess, or maybe after Four Swords Adventures, but in the Child Timeline regardless. Now, I have a theory for the Sheikah in particular. And, I, of course, I'm not sure how everybody feels about this, but of course I believe the Sheikah definitely made this ancient technology we see in Breath of the Wild. Now, we still, even if this game is after Twilight Princess, it must be after, it must be at least 10,000 years after Twilight Princess, which is an insane amount of time. Think about that for a second, yo. We're in 2017 right now. Holy shit, 10,000 years ago. Damn, Ko, imagine how, <laughs> like, how imagine our civilization 10,000 years ago. Anyway, it's just a crazy amount of time. Just to remember that for a second. So civilization and things and new beings can come up up to race 10,000 years later. That's probably how the Rito came to be in the Korok because that's a huge time span. A lot of new things can come to life. But back to the Sheikah. So, of course I believe that they made these guardians. And to start off my little backstory theory to my basically a theory to 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 my next theory. But here we go. So, before Ocarina of Time, the Civil War. We all know the Civil War, and it's a very mysterious war. We don't know exactly what went on, but we know in the Shadow Temple, it says, Here lies Hyrule's history of uh, greed and hatred. And also, someone in Castletown in Ocarina of Time says, You know, the Sheikah are basically gone. I'm going off memory right now. But the Sheikah are gone. I believe the war is what caused them to be gone. And I also believe that this war was a war against the Sheikah. Not the whole Sheikah tribe, because uh, because Impa was on the Hyrulean side. Because Impa is obviously for Princess Zelda we see in Ocarina of Time. So I believe the Sheikah tribe split, and they had a civil war against themselves and against the Hyruleans. And that's what happened in the Shadow Temple. I believe a lot of these Sheikah rebellions got killed, and a lot of them also got sent to the Twilight Realm, and that's why we fucking see the Sheikah Eye and all those Twilight people dudes in the Twilight Room. I think it makes sense. And also, since we have that in the Twilight Room, and then of course in the Child Timeline, Ganondorf, you know, he gets revealed of his plans because Link went in the future and came back. So Ganondorf's probably like, how the hell do they know my, my plans? So obviously, some kind of war happened against the Gerudo. We don't know exactly, don't go in particular, but the big thing that we do know is of course that Ganondorf was about to get executed by the sages, and they sent him to Twilight Realm, probably just like the Sheikah. Now, Gamp's in the Twilight Realm, and he probably influences Zant. Like, we already know, he comes back. We already know the story of Twilight Princess. But, if this Breath of the Wild is really after Twilight Princess way in the future, I believe this ancient technology might have just been built by the, tw the Twili. The Twili. I don't know how to exactly say it, but you know what I'm talking about. That's how probably... Probably the few shadows, kind of like a, uh, a foundation of this technology we see how powerful the few shadow is right and we see how powerful this ancient technology is in breath of the wild is right I'm not saying they could be totally different but we know that they are both that that the few shadow and this ancient technology is, is they are both associated with the sheikah in some way because we see the sheikah eye on both of them somehow and that's that's my only evidence to it but i believe that's where it's from so i believe the twili must have made this technology not sure of the reason why they did it Maybe to go against the Hylians because they've hated him so long for tramp trapping them in there, whatever it is. And maybe the Hylians, maybe some kind of thing happened. Who knows? But the Hylians somehow got control of these guardians and these divine beasts. And the good Sheikah side, like we see in Breath of the Wild in the Kakariko village, the good Sheikah side, and then there's a rebellion Sheikah side, the Yiga clan. So the Sheikah is still split even in Breath of the Wild. Now, I believe that they, like I said, the Hylians must have took this technology for themselves because they knew Ganon would probably be back eventually like he did 10,000 years before Breath of the Wild claimed again it came they used technology and it was all big success. But then 10,000 years later, as we see, Ganon is able to take over these Guardians, but I think I know why. And if this game is really after Fire Princess, 
he was able to take over these guardians and the divine beasts because he was already in the Twilight Realm. He's basically, he saw the creation of this technology. He knows probably the ins and outs of it. That's probably how he was able to take it over so easily. And of course, we know the ending of Breath of the Wild and stuff. I'm not going to get into it. But that's my theory. What do you guys think? I want to hear you guys' opinion. And I'm not just saying that because I want to get comments. No, it's seriously, I want to hear all these Zelda fans' opinion. But that's about it. Do you think Do you think the Sheikah was a driving influence on this technology? And do you think that the Twi'li from the Twilight Realm is kind of the, the foundation of that? You think this? Do you agree with me? Do you not? I want to know. That's about it, guys. Hope you guys have a good day or night whenever you're watching this. Edible, cutable, sign it out. Stay hype, my homies. Peace. One thing really quick that I wanted to add that when making this video, I kind of realized and I was like, holy shit, I kind of want to tell you guys in this video, but I'm just going to add it at the end really quick. So, just remember that in Twilight Princess, they refer to Wolf Link as a divine beast. I'm sure you guys already know this, but I'm just letting you guys know because as we know, in Breath of the Wild, the four beasts are known as the Divine Beasts. So, if my theory is correct, that is a little more evidence backing it up. That if the Twi'li did create it, the Twi'li, you know, they knew that a Divine Beast would come to their world. And that would be their hero. And that is, is what happened in Twilight Princess. You know, Wolf Link slash Twilight Princess Link, he came to the Twilight Realm. And, you know, he saved the light from the darkness and all that good shit. But anyway... They refer to him as a divine beast. So maybe they also used those wordings when they created the divine beast for Breath of the Wild. That's all, guys. Now I'm signing out for real. Have a good one. Peace.